So understanding the science behind manifestation requires an understanding of quantum physics, which isn't the easiest of tasks. However, in this video, I'm going to simplify things and I'm going to explain it to you in under five minutes. If you want to understand this on a deeper level, then I also have another video where I go really in depth into this topic. So I'll link that in the description and at the end of the video, if you would like to check that out after. So the first thing we need to understand is that one of the fundamental principles of quantum physics is an idea called wave particle duality. Now, this idea states that everything physical not only has particle-like characteristics, but it also has wave-like characteristics. So take an electron, for example, a tiny particle of matter. Obviously, an electron acts like a particle. This is what was always assumed under Newtonian physics. Everything physical is essentially made up of physical particles. However, scientists found out that particles also act like waves. Now, they found this out in the double slit experiment, and I have a handy little diagram of this here. So in this experiment, scientists were firing beams of electrons, so particles, through two slits. Now, what you would expect to happen in this experiment, because you're sending particles through, is you just expect these two clump patterns to occur on the back wall, where the particles have gone through the slit and hit the back wall. However, that is not what happened. Instead of getting this clump pattern, what actually happened is that they got this pattern on the back wall. This is called an interference pattern. And as you can see, this is what happens when waves go through the two slits. They create this interference pattern. So scientists were sending particles through and yet they were getting an interference pattern as if waves had gone through. So this is what led to wave particle duality, the idea that particles act like both particles and waves. However, this isn't even the most crazy part of the experiment. Where this gets really bizarre is when you set up a measuring device. So what scientists did is they set up a measuring device before the two slits. But now what happened is instead of getting the interference pattern that they were getting before, they actually did get this clump pattern. So when the experiment wasn't being measured or observed, the particles were acting like waves. But as soon as the experiment was measured or observed, the particles started acting like particles again. So when the experiment is being measured, the particles stop acting like waves and they collapse into physical particles. Now, this is called the collapse of the wave function. Now, the most widely accepted interpretation of this experiment is called the Copenhagen interpretation. And this is the idea that it is measurement that causes the waves to collapse into physical particles. Now, the Copenhagen interpretation doesn't define what a measurement is. However, there is a sub-interpretation of the Copenhagen interpretation that is called the von Neumann-Wigner interpretation. And according to this one, it is consciousness that causes the waves to collapse into physical particles. So it's not just the measuring device that causes the wave function to collapse, it's our consciousness somehow interacting with that measuring device that causes it to collapse. Now, if this interpretation is correct, then it's very significant because it obviously implies that our consciousness somehow shapes physical reality which sounds very much like the law of attraction. Now, if we think back to this experiment for a minute and the idea of the wave function collapsing, to apply this to the law of attraction, we need to understand what the wave function is. Now, a wave function is simply a mathematical description of the wave-like nature of a particle. So when a particle is acting like a wave, it isn't in any definite position like it would be when it's acting like a particle. So that wave function describes all the potential positions and all of the potential properties that that electron can be in or can have. The wave function describes the superposition of states that that electron can be in at the same time. So when it's going through the slits as a wave, for example, it's going through both slits at the same time. It's in a superposition of two states. So applying this to manifestation, think of the wave function as all of the potential realities that can exist that have not yet manifested in the physical world. So how do we collapse this wave function of all of these potential realities into one definite reality, the reality that you desire? Well, according to the von Neumann-Wiener interpretation, we can use our consciousness to do that collapse. So this is where quantum physics and manifestation potentially comes together. Through using our consciousness, we can collapse a potential that exists within the quantum field into physical reality. Now, according to Dr. Joe Dispenza, we do that through our electromagnetic signature, which is simply a combination of our thoughts and our feelings. And of course, that is what many manifestation teachers teach, that our thoughts and our feelings need to be in alignment with what it is that we want to manifest. From a quantum physics perspective, if the von Neumann-Wigner interpretation is correct, then perhaps our electromagnetic signature is what is collapsing the wave function into a specific physical reality. So that is my short and simplified explanation of how 
quantum physics potentially can provide some scientific explanation for manifestation. As I said in the beginning of this video, if you want to understand all of these concepts on a deeper level, then please feel free to watch my other video where I really go into this much more in depth. Anyway, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.